Hi, welcome to Mechanics Revision Week Part 2. This video, we're going to look at two things. Number one, Suvat questions. Number two, um, is going to be resolving forces along the slope question, which is more difficult than other questions, in my opinion. So, uh, the first, uh, I'm not going to go through the easy questions with you because I just assume that you'll understand that yourself. Um, but I'm going to go through a few of these more challenging questions with you. Um, the first one is on Subat. The first one is actually a multiple choice question from Subat. And um, if you look at the second question in the, on the slides, and uh, in the words document, there's more, dif more difficult questions on that as well. So um, let's start with slide two. A slide two is a projectile. This is traveling at 25 meters per second at 35 degrees. And they're asking you, um, what's the time taken for the projectile to return to the ground? And I have added uh, to ask for the horizontal distance travel um, from that thing as well. Every single time you do Suvat, what do you do first? Incorrect. You resolve it vertically and horizontally first because vertical and horizontal, this does not, um, there's only one way linking the vertical and horizontal. What is it? Let's think about it. So, both of these, we actually do not have to do SUVAT for both of them. Why? Because in horizontal direction, acceleration, is zero. If I set it in zero, we only need to do three horizontal equals distance horizontal over time. Because the V horizontal is not going to change. U horizontal will be equal to V horizontal. In the back of this uh, uh, direction, we do S U V A T. Okay, can we just use 25 meters per second? No, because this does not comply with vertical and horizontal. So what do we need to do is to turn 25 meters per second into vertical and horizontal component. And this is going to be 25 sine 35 degrees. And this is 25 cos 35 degrees. So vertically, my U will be 25 sine 35 degrees and my VH will be 25 cos 35 degrees. This thing goes to the ground here and the question is asking you, what's the time to get the projectile to return to the ground? As in here, this is not distance, as in here is displacement. So in this situation, I, for displacement, I only take care of the start and end point. Vertically, this thing has not gained height, because from here, from the start point and the finish point, uh, the displacement only take care of the start and finish point. In this situation, as Vertical displacement is zero because start and finish point is vertically has not changed. A is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second because we're taking upwards velocity as positive, downwards velocity must be negative, so downward acceleration must be negative as well. We don't know V, but do we care about? Don't care. Because for Subat questions, we only need four of the unknowns to actually uh, do a Subat question. T is what we're trying to find. So, which equation do we use? We use S equals UT plus half a T squared. Substituting the equation in here, U will be 25 sine 35 degrees. And in here, uh, minus 9.8 at t squared. In here, we'll have some of equation. 
25 times 35 degrees and half times minus 9.8. So that will be two roots, t equals zero, and t will be equal to 2.9 seconds from this thing. Oh, actually, this t in here as well. So what does this, this mean? That means that when your displacement, it, that's only two points, the displacement is equal to zero at point A and point B. A is happening at t equals zero, and B is happening at t equals 2.9 seconds. That's exactly what we expected. So um, with this, you can actually calculate what t is to go to point B in here. Okay, horizontally, so in vertical and horizontal, if the motion does not uh, actually, the movement and motion does not actually affect one another, what is linking vertical and horizontal? What is linking is time. These two t's are exactly the same because obviously, the, wherever the object is, at one point, the time is mm -hmm. I can't really explain to you very, very, very properly, but these two times are the same time at any given point. Understood. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to substitute this into here, 2.9, and distance horizontal. And distance horizontal will be 2.9 cos 35 times 2. Yeah. Okay. Try slide uh, two and three, okay? Thank you very much. Hi, welcome back. I want you to do slide um, four, five, six as well before you start this question because it's quite easy. And uh, this is slide seven and I'm going to start doing this with you. So slide seven in here, we've got a goal Golfer hitting a golf ball at the top of a cliff, and the initial velocity is 40 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees, and the total time of flight is six seconds. Obviously, let's go vertical and horizontal in here. I do S U V A T and horizontal. That's no acceleration. So distance up speed equals distance over time, distance horizontal, speed horizontal, and this time will be equal to this time. Do we know what this time is already? Yes, we all already know what this time is. This time is six. This time is six seconds. I know that acceleration must be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And um, what do we need to know about these three? So let's look at a starting point and finish point. The vertical starting point and the vertical finish point, if you look at the vertical displacement, is this point to this point. So the vertical displacement is actually H. Because displacement only take care of the starting and finish point. Horizontal distance will be, distance horizontal, will be this one. So it's distance horizontal or displacement horizontal. Because it only take care of the starting and the finish point. Okay, how do we deal with you? So exaggerate the triangle, it's 30 degrees in here and 40 meters per second. So vertical will be 40 sine 30 degrees and horizontal will be 40 cos 30 degrees. So in U, in here it will be 40 sine 30 degrees. V, don't care. Same as before, um, if we substitute this into s equals ut plus half at squared, 
final T is an after substituted into here and you can have distance horizontal or displacement horizontal afterwards. Okay, what I want you to do is try this question and we are going to move on to the second part of our uh, lesson which is resolving force along a slope in the vertical and uh, a long slope and perpendicular to the slope. If you have any questions on any extra questions on Zubat, please leave that in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Okay? Try this question. Welcome back. This is our second last part of this video. So, this is all about a, fall, a, a ball or an object that's rolling down a slope. So, if something is rolling down a slope, um, it will be very, very helpful for, the, for us to actually get the forces that is perpendicular to the slope and actually are uh, along the same direction of the slope. Because if we have to force down this direction, using F equals MA, we can actually get the acceleration of this particle and actually we can actually find the, um, uh, how, how is this particle moving, what's the speed at the bottom, what's the speed at the top, etc, etc, etc. Et so, this is slide 10 and that's question 1 in slide 10. A mass of 2.5 kg, 2.5 kg times 9.8 will be the weight of this thing. This thing is height 3 meters and it uh, at the bottom is got a velocity of 5 meter per second. So let's actually uh, it's asking you what is the average frictional force between the mass and the ram. Before anything like this, let's actually resolve this force along the slope and perpendicular to the slope. So this is a triangle I always draw because uh, some people find it really, really confusing. The first force I draw is obviously the weight. The second force I draw will be, this is not the force here, so weight will, this can resolve in the uh, a long slope, a perpendicular to the slope. So I will draw along the slope first, along the slope of this area, so dotted line here. So vertically, I draw a vertical line down here because this is the vertical direction. So the weight will have uh, re resolved itself in the two directions. One is uh, parallel to the slope, one is perpendicular to the slope, and this is 90 degrees. So very, very quickly, I'm not going to, be, because this is 90 degrees and this is 90 degrees as well, and this angle and this angle is the same angle. So this angle must be equal to this angle by similar triangle. This angle is exactly the same angle because this line and this line is parallel, this line and this line is parallel. So this angle will be equal to this angle. So this angle must be equal to this angle. Okay, so this, uh, let me recap one more time. This is the whole purpose of this video is that, or this section of the video, is that when you have a, a ball that is rolling down a slope, the weight will resolve itself in a lot, uh, in direction of long slope and perpendicular to the slope. And in this situation, uh, along the slope will be 2.5 times 9.8, 2.5 times 9.8 sine theta. In this one, it will be 2.5 cos uh, 2.5 times 9.8 cos theta. That's not very, very good. Um, let me uh, enlarge this for you so you actually know what I'm talking about here. This is the weight in here. This is um, parallel to the slope and this is perpendicular to the slope. The weight is 2.5 times 9.8. So in here, this angle equals this angle because this angle and this angle are the same angle. So this angle will be theta. So this one, this per parallel part will be 2.5 times 9.8 times sine theta. Sine theta, 2.5 times 9.8 times cos theta.
Okay, so in this situation, sine theta equals opposite alpha hypotenuse, so it's 3 over 5. So 3 over 5 will be 0 0.6. So if I'm going to find the accelerations that's going down the slope in here, the force going down the slope, force down slope will be 2.5 times 9.8 sine theta, which is equal to 2.5 times 9.8 times 0 0.6. This is going to give us 14.7 newtons. One more time. Wait in here, resolve it parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. This angle is equal to this angle because these are the same angle. Because this line is parallel to this line, this line parallel to this line, so this angle from here will be equal to this angle. That's why this is this angle equal to this angle, this angle equal to this angle. Enlarge it in here. This is going to be 2.5 times 9 by sine theta, 2.5 times 9 by cos theta. Where the theta come from is the original dimension of the drawing. So if uh, f down slope is this one. So what is actually the um, resulting force there? They say that um, at the bottom, it is 5 meters per second. If we use that as UVAT, I know the displacement is 5 meters because it rolled down 5 meters. Initially, it's 0. V is uh, if, uh, the final speed is 5. And I'm trying to find out a, a, a. I don't care about T. So V squared minus U squared equals 2AS. S is 5. 2 is 5. At, uh, 2. And then B is 5 squared. So in here, A is actually equal to 2.5 meter per second squared. Using F equals MA, where A is 2.5 kg. Uh, sorry, for, where M is 2.5 kg. F in here will be equal to 6.25. What is F? F is a resultant force. So, what do I mean by resultant force? We've got a force downwards. What's the force this way? It's going to be friction. The question is asking you, what's the average frictional force? So the average frictional force, uh, so F resultant must be equal to F down uh, along the slope minus F friction. So F resultant force is 6. At slope is 14.7 F friction. So F friction must be equal to 8.45 newtons. Okay. All right. Um, please try this question yourself. And we are going to go through the next question as well. And the next question is going to be the last section of our resolving force video okay comment below if you don't know what i'm talking about in this one okay try it hello this is the last section of the video this last section of the video is slide 11 but i want you to do uh, all the slides and also all the uh, Word documents that's attached to this video as well in the um, Google Classroom place. So in this situation, we have a ramp which is uh, 1.8 degrees slanted and the weight of the object is 0 0.2. So, sorry, the mass of this object is 0 0.2. The weight of this object must be 0 0.2 times 9.8. It is rolling down the ramp. They are asking you for the components of weight along along the slope and in initial acceleration. Exact same thing. We are going to resolve this weight 
parallel to the slope or along the slope and perpendicular. Let's draw a line parallel to the slope first. Great. And then now draw a perpendicular line from that line here. So exaggerating this triangle, we have got a triangle like this. And I know because this angle equals this angle, this angle must be equal to 1.8 this angle. So the weight is 0 0.2 times 9.8. So this is going to turn into this way and this way. So this way must be 0 0.2 times 9.8 sine 1.8 degrees. This one will be 0 0.2 times 9.8 cos 1.8 degrees. For, so the first question, show that the component along the slope, so the component along the slope will be this one, so that will be 0 0.2 times 9.8 times sine 1.8 degrees, so this is going to give us 0 0.000, oh, 0 0.0062 newtons. The second part of this is asking uh, the initial acceleration r along the slope finding acceleration is very very easy as well f equals m times a f is 0 0.0062 m is uh, 0 0.2 and that's how you can find acceleration let's recap the second part of uh, of our uh, mechanics lesson two Number one, if something is rolling down the slope, the only thing that's helping it rolling down is the weight. So if the only thing that's helping it down is the weight, you will need to resolve it in the direction of the slope, which is parallel to the slope, and also in the direction perpendicular to the slope. Um, when we are talking about acceleration here, this is resultant force. So if you have any frictional force, you need to minus that with the resulting force, frictional force will go up this way, always opposed to the direction of the motion. Earlier, we talked about Zuvat. Zuvat, we we need to resolve the force, uh, the velocity into vertical and horizontal directions. Vertical and horizontal directions are linked by the time, but otherwise they are independent. Horizontal direction in AS uh, is usually, uh, acceleration is usually zero. So when we are calculating that, we only need to use speed equals distance of time. Horizontal distance and vertical distance is completely separated. Vertical distance, we don't talk about vertical distance, we actually talk about vertical displacement. It only takes uh, account the start and finish points. It could be negative if it, if you take the direction up, the uh, the height could be negative down there. Okay, thank you very much for your um, attentiveness, and I will see you next week. Thank you. Comments down below if you are struggling.